welcome. You are joining the Front Room Gallery uh, virtual exhibition tour. We are lucky enough to have today with us Zoe Weatherall, who is the photographer who is presented in this sole exhibition. The title of the show is Lines of Nature. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing a virtual tour of the gallery. This is a digital twin of the exhibition there where the works were all installed. And this is a way that we can all see the show safely from our homes. And in just a moment, uh, Daniel's gonna take us in. And we have Zoe here with us. Hi, Zoe. Hi. So Zoe, where are you joining uh, us from? I'm, I'm at home in um, Brooklyn, in Williamsburg, New York. So, um, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, is everybody ready to enter? We're gonna start over uh, at the yellow grass photograph there. So we're just gonna zoom in here. Great. So all these images are taken from hot air balloons. Um, they're, they're all taken, there's a mixture of um, shots from Australia and also um, from the US. Um, and it's sort of exploring the relationship between man and nature, um, which has been kind of an ongoing theme with my aerial work. Um, and I've been shooting this, like is kind of part of a larger series I've been shooting for a few years and it will be probably an ongoing thing. Um, and then this is, this body of work is sort of the most recent um, work that I've done. So this one here is, um, it was taken in uh, the Yarra Valley region, um, just outside Melbourne in Australia, which is where I've done a lot of um, balloon flights. So I have a lot of images from there. Um, this was taken in 2019. Um, it was around March, so it was just coming out of summer there, which is why the ground is so um, dry, as you can see. And this is this is a 40 by 60 inch print. Yeah, excellent. And there's something interesting too that we can see as we go through the exhibition is that you're really using um, a strong sense of geometry within the landscape to do the composition for these photographs. And here you have like a two thirds to one third ratio split with that uh, fence line there that's broken up with the organic uh, placement of the trees in the center. And then uh, I think in some of the writing that we had done about the exhibition, there is this kind of like meditative look to uh, the way that the the crops were kind of raked, you know, like that it's- Yeah, that it kind of almost looks like a Zen garden. Um, you can see a better quality image of this photograph online because this is a, a tour. It was taken in the uh, gallery. There's a lot more information and a lot more visual information you'll be able to see uh, online. And we have a Beth Derry who's saying that the landscape almost looks like a fingerprint, human nature mix. And she says that it's gorgeous. So thank you, Beth. Um, do you want to move on to the animals feeding a piece? Yeah. yeah. Um, and one of the reasons I like shooting from hot air balloons is it's really, um, it's really peaceful and you're kind of moving slowly. You don't need to remove um, doors or windows like you would from a helicopter. Um, and it's a really fun thing to do. And I'm usually kind of hanging over the basket, looking straight down, using a long lens to kind of compress um the view so that uh like I really like to focus on texture and color and line and um it's like a really fun way to shoot that gives you a different look that than if you use a drone or something um so this one we this was the same flight as a previous um image and this was just before we landed so we flew over these animals just before we landed amongst um bales of hay um, that kind of got caught up in the balloon when we were trying to pack it up. Um, but because we were not far off the ground here and then the um, the balloon, the only way they make noise really is with the like fire jet to um, to kind of heat up the balloon. And so if you do that and you click close enough to the ground, all the animals start to run away. Um, so 
I, I'm kind of glad I got this shot because um, a few seconds later they were all running away because I was scared of the balloon. <laughs> I know it's funny you were saying that you thought that another optional title for this was Animals Running, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a few uh, seconds later. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my shots don't have animals in them, um, but this one, uh, yeah, a, a few seconds later and it would have been a totally different shot. Mm -hmm. And there's something also really nice about this, going back to the geometry of the composition, that's like fused also with the organic lines of all the paths of the animals coming in. At some point, yeah. when you look at this, it looks like almost like an abstract painting, right? Well, it, it also kind of looks a bit like an explosion as well. Um, but this is probably one of my favorite um, images in the show as well. Um, I really like it. Yeah. There, um, what are the animals? There, um, Mostly cows. Um, yeah, is there anything we can zoom in just a little bit more? There could be some yeah. um, like sheep in there as well. There's some sheep in there. But it's like um, the Yarra Valley where this was taken, it's like a really big farming and winery region. So it's there's a lot of like farmland and panics, paddocks and everything. So um, yeah. So yeah, so for Diane, then what are the animals? So that answers that question. And then we have from Anne, is each one a single photo or a combination of two or three? Uh, so yeah, each one is a single photograph. Um, and there is not really much editing involved um, at all. I have a lot of lines in the images. And so sometimes if I don't get it completely straight in when I take it, I'll, um, I'll straighten it later. But um, everything you see is pretty much a, as it was shot. Um, I just only did like minor adjustments stage image. Yeah. That's pretty amazing too, because you're, you are moving when these are being taken for that, you know, to be able to catch that stability, you know, and the animals yeah. are moving too. So it's a lot and of different variables. Also, um, if for people who've never done a hot air balloon flight, they're always, they're usually done first thing in the morning. And so when we take off, sometimes it's still dark. Um, and so that the first few minutes of the flight, um, it's pretty hard to get shots because it's still um, still pretty dark and then you're moving as well. So um, sometimes I have to wait for the sun to come up a bit more to be able to shoot properly. Yeah, that creates a really beautiful quality of light in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue a walk through the gallery. And then this piece, uh, this is one of my favorites uh, from the exhibition. This is a uh, hint of green. And the majority of the photos in the show are uh, presented at a 40 inch by 60 inch size, which is a, a pretty large scale uh, photograph. Uh, so 60 this, inches is five feet. Yeah, 60 inches is five feet long. Um, and there's just so much uh, detail in there. Andrea is asking, is the whitewash look just from the dryness of the landscape or did you manipulate uh, the color in Photoshop? The color effect is beautiful. So maybe you can speak a little bit to that, Zoe. Yeah, I have not manipulated the colors at all. Um, so a lot of these were shot um, in, in summer or at the end of summer. So the land is really, really dry. Um, so that's just the effect that it has um, at that time of year. Um, I have done a flight in the same area at a different time of year, like um, before summer and it's very green. It looks totally different. Um, so it's just a product of um, the ground being so dry. Yeah. I think you can and, to see yeah, I mean, there's so much information. The color really is uh, beautiful in these. Yeah, this this image has been really popular because it's a little different to um, like in terms of composition to the other shots that I have um, in terms of the way it's divided up. And then you have this sort of similar coloring as the other shots, but then this little section of green, which is just how it was. And so I like the, um, the geometry of like the line down the middle, but then the um, kind of less structured, kind of structured, but not, not structured way the rest of it um, is as well. 
Yeah. Because you almost think that these lines should connect the, the it's like, it looks like a dry rubber bed in certain points. Yeah. To it. So I think that um, the line down the middle is probably just a, a division of like paddocks of um, farmland. But again, because I'm flying over these in a balloon and we can't really control where we go because we have to fly with the wind. And so a lot of the locations, unless it's something distinctive, um, I don't actually know where we were when I shot it. Oh, that's interesting too. Like, yeah, yeah, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to recreate these shots if I tried. Mm -hmm. But everything also is like in constant uh, flux too. Just because you are capturing components of nature, you know, you come back another time, like the vegetation could have changed. Yeah. Um, the crop lines, uh, you know, the harvesting, the roadways, like a lot of them are, um, the only stability in it is these fence lines and things like that. Yeah. For it. Um, so I guess we should uh, pull back a little bit so we can take a better view there because that really shows you know how centered the composition is with this like nice uh, roadway line there that kind of like curves in along the greenery there and it's like counter you know counterpoint with the, the dry riverbed on the left it's just a really great composition there and the subtlety of uh, color is really nice in that. So do you wanna go around to the trio around the other side? And this wall is a nice, like uh, a really nice uh, installation to see uh, all three uh, pieces together with this uh, composition, if we can get it centered right. I know, it's um, And then we have a, an option, uh, opportunity here to see some of the other sizes for the photographs. And I know that sometimes even in these like virtual tours, we're trying to give the impression that you are there in person uh, to give a sense of scale because all of Zoe's photographs are available in three sizes. So the, there's the very large size that we were just seeing the 40 inch by 60 inch. But here we see to the left, the two stacked images are uh, 28 inches by 40, uh, 40 inches. And then to the right is a smaller edition size, which is 20 by 30, all uh, pretty impressive sizes there. Um, but this gives a kind of an idea of um, the different ratio that's available for the photographs. Yeah, I, I always love printing them really big. I think um, these kinds of images look really great large, especially when you can see them in person as well. Um, but it's good to show the different sizes and then also like I live in New York City and I know most people have tiny apartments and so um, it's good to have different sizes for different size walls and everything. Um, so and I think these three look really good together. Yeah and just to mention too they're all like very small edition sizes too. So they're uh, each just uh, five editions for uh, each print there. Yeah, so the, and the so these all these were taken in the Yarra Valley also, um, but the the top um, the top picture that was taken. I did a flight last year in um, February, just before um, COVID happened. So that top one was taken then, and then the other two were taken on the same flight as the last images a year before that. Um, but same the same time of year, so. Um, I guess you can see the dry ground on the the bottom one and the one on the on the right. Um, and then the top one, it's it's more kind of crafted um, farmland, and so that area probably looks like that um, most of the year because that kind of landscape gets um, like tended to um, more than just the dry ground. Right. I like the different um, relationships between these three in particular too, because there's like three lines of trees in them and they've created like the border uh, between like the very dry grant land and then also the, you know, irrigated crops there. And yeah. So, and do you have, you are doing this uh, intuitively, right? You're, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really, um, I don't really have a plan when I 
do a flight and because we can't control where we go I just kind of um know the kinds of things that I want to look for you I mean the show is called lines of nature so you'll see um I have a big focus on on straight lines and dividing up images that way um so I just usually look for those kinds of things that are going to be interesting and have this kind of texture and um and and color and and things like that so that's usually what I'm looking for and then I, I just kind of go up there and um whatever I see that kind of catches my eye um that I think will look good and add to um add to the series and like show what I'm what I'm trying to show yeah and and this bottom image um it's been uh it's been a favorite of of a few people I know as well because that bottom section almost doesn't look like a picture um it kind of almost has a watercolor effect to it which is kind of weird but it's easier for me to um like work out what everything is because I was there and I shot it but it's hard for other people sometimes to work out some of the images yeah it's really amazing the different textures that you're getting with this you know the the composed lines versus like that does have like a very painterly feel the one on the bottom left yeah so. and the the image on the top that flight that I did actually that was just before COVID last year that was a very foggy and cloudy day so when we were up in the balloon there was a lot of low cloud that we were flying above um and so a lot of the shots I had had low cloud um getting in the way of me looking at the um at the ground and so um some of them it was very subtle but some of them I had to kind of edit a little bit to try and get rid of the like hazy cloud areas um, it was beautiful being up there but it kind of made it a little more difficult mm -hmm. it must be such an amazing experience just shooting that way too it's amazing anyone who hasn't been in a hot air balloon I highly recommend it um it's like one of the most fun things you can do and then are you are, are you actually hanging over the edge when you're shooting these well so the basket well depending on how tall you are we'll go up to probably um higher than my waist it'll probably go up to here on me and so um yeah i i'm usually kind of hanging over the side looking straight down as much as i can yeah that's which seems, seems like <laughs> scary it seems scary but it's really not that scary when you're up there and i'm looking through the camera concentrating on what i'm doing and so i don't really notice where I am and um the most like disconcerting thing I think for people who've never done it before is when you when you um kind of get to the location before the flight the whole balloon is packed into a little trailer pulled behind a car and so that pulls up and you're thinking that's what we're about to fly in like it seems like a strange a strange thing but um it's really not scary at all haha uh -huh. yeah well, Beth Mary says she's always wanted to, and seeing your work uh, makes her now more than ever. So, yeah, you you yeah. can do them. Um, there's flights in New Jersey. You can do upstate New York, there, but you can do them like all over the world. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue through. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, it might have been better before. I'll, yeah. So, so there's just one, a little bit of reflection in the glass because this was taken at the gallery and so we have some of the exhibition lights there. Um, so it, some cases the lighting's a little bit better than others. And again, you know, please uh, take a look on the website at the frontroomles.com, Minds of Nature. You'll be able to see a, cl a clearer image. But this uh, exhibition tour really is to have a, a chance to go through the exhibition as it was in this space and talk to Zoe about it. Um, so, and this one is framed with the plexi, and that's what you're seeing there. Yeah, usually I would have them all framed, but um, doing it this way to get footage of it in the gallery um, really looks good. Um, a lot of them look good unframed for this purpose, but usually I'd have them framed. 
Um, so this image, um, this is the oldest one in the show. It was taken a few years ago. And this was from a hot air balloon flight I did in Melbourne. Um, they do flights over the city of Melbourne. Um, it's one of the few cities in the world where you can actually do hot air balloon flights because usually you're in um, you're outside of cities in country areas because there's more places to land. Um, so this is a golf course um, out in the suburbs of Melbourne. This was also not too long before we landed. Um, and because it's a golf course, obviously it's like perfect, perfect um, grass. And um, so I, I kind of like to look for things like that. Um, there was a question. Yeah, so Ali um, is asking which suburb, do you remember? Um, yes, it was around Moorabbin, if people know Melbourne. Um, yeah, we, we landed kind of near Moorabbin Airport. Um, so this was just near there, a the, the golf course near there. Yeah, and you yeah. can really see the manicured uh, nature of the golf course there. Yeah, so I, I like um, I like this one for the colors as well. Um, it's yeah, it little... seems almost uh, surreal, that blue with the green. Uh, yeah. And Ali says, oh yeah, the American food store is out in Moorabbin. Oh, wow. <laughs> awesome. I've never been there. I'll have to check it out when I go back. Um, that is, is that the ocean? No, it's a, it's a, like a little, I wouldn't even say a lake. It's a, a lake or a pond in, in the golf course. So. Um, it is so yeah. blue. That blue yeah. is like, it seems unreal. Yeah, and I like kind of this shot because it um, a lot of the other um, images in the exhibition are kind of um, more like muted colors, and so this kind of brightens it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives a nice uh, you know counterpoint to some of the more muted colors yeah. um, in the landscapes there. And part of this is because as a golf course, again, this is like man manipulating nature to get that like very even green even the stone placement is uh you know very manicured very in intentional um and diane acock says i love the contrast in this one yeah it's a it's another beautiful piece from the show zoe so yeah i i have i do have like a focus on very deliberate um kind of mad made nature um yeah. Yeah. So if we continue, the next piece coming up is Runway. And this is interesting um, because this is uh, very man made, but it's like been overtaken again by nature there. Yeah. I, I love this shot. This was taken on the flight that I did. Um, just last year before COVID. And um, again, this kind of has a watercolor look to it as well, which I like because it almost doesn't look like a photograph. Um, but this, I know exactly where it was. This was um, Lilydale Airport in the Yarra Valley. And you can, if you type in Lilydale Airport into Google, um, like Google Maps, Google Earth, um, you can see where this was taken and see that this is like the runway of a really, really tiny regional airport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Daniel's saying, you know, for him, it's like there's a lot of digital noise, but this almost looks like a television, like that, just the surface texture of it. For, for me, I feel like that it looks like a tapestry with the horizontal lines uh, going across. So there's something- Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I I do, I get that a lot, like, um, I mean, as I said before, I, it's easy for me to figure things out because I, I was there and I shot it, but sometimes different people will see different things in the images and it's really interesting for me to um, hear that from everyone. Yeah, because they, you know, it's uh, identifying these uh, as what, you know, a, a common way to describe them is like, well, they're aerial photographs, but oftentimes they're very abstract aerial landscape photographs. So that you can really see the abstraction uh, in this one. Uh, we have a comment from Allie who says it almost looks like, yeah, a tapestry or something made in a loom. 
Yeah. Because yeah. it almost has that like velvety kind of a texture. Uh, yeah. To it. And I mean, the because these were shot early in the morning as well. So there's, there'll be, um, you know, some probably graininess to the image just because of the time of day it was shot as well. So that everything kind of adds to the texture of, of the look. Yeah. But yeah, I, this is one of my favorite ones also. Uh, and Paul Raphaelson asks, uh, do you have any input on how high the balloon flies? You seem to I, be right around the cusp of where things start to flatten out, but don't do so completely. I have zero say in how high we go, um, but I have, over all the flights I've done over the years, I've I've been... I've flown anywhere from like a, a few feet off the ground to the highest I've been is about 9,000 feet, which that's getting very high. Um, and I've only been that high once. Um, usually we're just a few hundred feet off the ground. And the reason that they change altitudes is to, um, there's different wind direction and, and wind speed at different altitudes. And so they'll change the height of the balloon if they want to um, go in a different direction. So the pilot is kind of doing all that and navigating. So I have, I have no say, but most of the flights were just a few hundred feet off the ground. Yeah, and Daniel, uh, Daniel Acock wanted to point out, but you do have control over the... With your lenses. With your lenses. Oh um, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to a point, yeah, because I mean, if I was flying at 9,000 feet, then... Yeah. I'd need a pretty long lens to get a shot like <laughs> yeah. this. Um, but yeah, usually I have two cameras with me, one with um, like a shorter lens, one with a longer lens. Like 99% of all my images are taken with the longer lens because um, I just think it's like a better um, a view. I like the kind of compressed view um, that I get from that lens. And then usually the heights I'm at kind of lend itself to um, shooting in long like that. Mm -hmm. right. Well, let's continue. There's two more pieces for us to look at uh, individually in the show. How people can navigate themselves by clicking. Yeah, and just a technical thing. If you did want to go visit this yourself and do a self-guided tour that there are uh, marks on the floor of these circles and that uh, will help you to uh, pinpoint your placement. Uh, as you can see, the master the navigator, line. Daniel, is doing so line. well. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think this one lines up, but um, that's okay. Majority um, of them do. So this is actually the only um, image in this show that was shot in Virginia. Um, this was taken actually in March last year. So it was just before COVID, like literally probably two weeks before everything shut down. Um, so I'm happy that I got to do these flights just before because I didn't know that I wouldn't be able to do any for a while. Um, so this, you can see it was a sunny day. So it's a little bit different um, light. Um, but again, where I was in Virginia, it's, it's the same kind of landscape as in the Yarra Valley. So like farming region, these are horses. Um, and I just really love the, um, the long shadows because of course it's early in the morning as well. So I have some other um, shots from Virginia um, on my website also. Yeah, what's this for? Well, Daniel wanted me to ask what the, or for you to be able to tell everybody what the central square is and the composition it looks like a little red um, um marking I there which might be don't, a i don't actually know what it is um i'm guessing it's like um it could be like food or something for them because mm -hmm. i think they're all walking towards that but i don't actually know what it is yeah if you zoom out you can see that there's several lines going into that um it looks like there might have been like a fence line to separate the upper half from the bottom half of the composition there. Um, and then you have all the animals like tracing their way in there. 
there's kind of an interesting pickup of the tufts of grass just because of the time of day and the long casting of the shadows that create like again like this really interesting like surface quality you know uh, illusionary surface quality uh to the photograph um yeah and that's something also that maybe we should mention is that um you're printing on a matte paper right i mean the, this is something for people to to think about uh when they're looking at photography you look at the digital image and then when you see it printed, sometimes it's print, you know, maybe you could talk just a moment about the paper that you select for these. Yeah, um, the, these are like really high quality, fine art ar archival um, inkjet prints. And so the paper is really, really high quality. I have a really amazing printer um, that I've been using for you know, over 10 years. And um, I think when when COVID's over and everything goes back to normal, I'll I'll do another show and so everyone can come and see them in person because it's really um like people are surprised when they see them. Um the, the quality of the prints really um kind of something that you can't really get from the screen. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, it, it really it makes a difference in um how it's displayed. Yes, and it's a also that it's not the high gloss shine that some people might expect, to, you know, with the photograph. Um, yeah, um, and, and this can really get in to see the detail. Right? <laughs> yeah, and you're using a printer in Australia, right? Oh yes, yes. My my printer actually. Um, I went to college with him, and then we graduated, and I started doing photography, and he became a printer, and so. I've known him a long time and he's very, very technical. And um, I don't know everything about the printing process. I usually give him the files and, you know, tell him to make it look good. And he um, just creates these amazing prints for me and um, sends them to me from Australia via a courier. So yeah. that's a really important relationship to have as a photographer is yeah. working with a master printer. Right. Yeah, he he's really great, and um, it's called Third Thirds Fine Art Printing in Melbourne. If anyone's interested, but um, yeah, he he's a really great printer, and I trust him, and he's he's really done some great work for me over the years, and so that's why I keep going back to him. Mm -hmm. So, and this flight, um, because this was taken in March, just a few weeks after the Yarra Valley flight in Australia, but obviously being in the US, this was taken just at the end of winter. So completely different, even though it kind of looks the same kind of texture. Um, this was a pretty cold morning. And I have other shots that you can see on my website that have um, trees with no leaves on them because it's it still looks like winter. So it's a totally different um, look um, for that time of year. Yeah. And you can really see the different, you know, seasonal changes in the photographs too from the series. We have one last see, piece I would, I would. in the show to take a look at, and this is a, the last yeah, it is a different. You know, the colors are very different. It has this like beautiful mint green down at the bottom, and this one's called the lines of nature, which is the same as the title of the exhibition. So it's a kind of an apt photograph to end our tour on. Um, and it has like, it does all the things that you want, you know, from the show as far as the compositional points of the diagonal uh, parallel lines, the organic uh, textural, like almost like watercolor field, and then the full flat uh, field of color from that water there. Where was this yeah, one taken, Zoe? Th this was in the Yarra Valley also, um, that flight that I did last year. Um, and these, these are the colors that, um, that they were as well. I didn't manipulate this or, you know, it, that's water at the bottom there. And so um, I don't really know why it has that green color. That's, that's how it was. And this was one of the shots as well where there, there were parts of the image that were like a little bit hazy because there was all this low um, fog and cloud. So I, I kind of um, tried to eliminate that in editing a little bit, but that's about all I, all I did with this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it looks like that the the crops are coming right up to this like sandy driveway. Do, was there any indication during your trip to really know what what was happening there? 
I don't really know because this one was shot so close and that that top section would have been a, a very close to um, the top image in that group of three on the other wall because um, it's the same kind of um, same kind of, um, kind of land. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't really know. I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to tell you where this was to go yeah. back there or or figure out what is surrounding it. That's also nice, you know, in a way that you're just directly reacting to your experience with the land, you know, with the landscape itself, that it's a, you know, a back and forth between your experience and then that, that capture of this. Yeah, space. I mean, one of the things I love about balloon flights as well is the, the unpredictable nature of it, um, where I don't know what kind of shots I'll get from a flight. Some flights I've done, I might only get one image that I like, and other flights I might get. 12 um and so i kind of like not knowing where we're going to go and what i'm going to see and it's just a totally different way of shooting compared to getting a helicopter and charting a flight to go shoot something specific it's a totally different kind of experience yeah that that creates this like amazing moment of uh you know unpredictability yeah um, and and the fact that i can't recreate it and do the same thing and I'll do flights repeatedly in the same locations and always get completely different shots. So um, I kind of like that about it. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Uh, if anybody has any more questions, we're going to uh, wrap up the tour. So if you have any uh, more um, final questions for Zoe, we're just gonna take a moment and you can just type those into the chat screen. And we'll just like uh, take one more quick uh, turn around the exhibition. Yeah, because it's nice to really see everything one more time all together. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because it does, I mean, for me, I do, it does make you think that you're doing, uh, a, you know, we're doing a, a virtual tour of the exhibition, but you're also experiencing you know, through your photographs, all these different uh, views of nature and the landscape and the different locations that you traveled. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to just do a hot air balloon tour of the world and do them all. That's my goal. One day I'll yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, in 80 days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you, everyone. I'll uh, just wait one more moment if anybody has any questions. I think this will be it. Well, thank you so much, Zoe. It's really been a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Beth says, beautiful show. Congratulations, Diane. Beautiful show, Zoe. Exclamation points. Awesome. I'm glad everyone could uh, come and learn some more information about the, the images. Yeah, and uh, we'll be uh, putting this up for view online. So after this, I'll follow up with a link uh, to the recording of this. Uh, if there was anything you wanted to revisit or if you would like to share it with anybody that was not able to join today, we'll make that available also for view. Uh, Andrea says, thanks for the tour, enjoying seeing the work. Ali says, great work as always. Uh, and Shira says, thank you, Zoe, love your work. So we are big fans. We were thrilled to speak with you today. Julie says, great show. Thanks to the gallery and thanks to Zoe. Paul says, great work and thank you. Um, so we thank you as well. Awesome. Have thanks a great rest for, of your day, uh, everyone. Thanks for hosting. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.